first of the transformations we're going to talk about is dilations. And the dilations is the only one that doesn't stay rigid. So this one is actually going to change the size of the shape. So to dilate means to, like if you have your eyes dilated, so this is to decrease or increase. So decrease means to make smaller, increase means to make bigger. But we should already know that. So it changes the size of the original figure by multiplying by a scale factor. And you guys did scale factors last year, so you're going to deal with them again this year. So to find your scale factor, it is a ratio, so we're going to put them in fraction form of corresponding sides. So a ratio, um, how you're going to do this is you're going to do the image over the pre-image. In other words, the new, which is with our tick mark there, so our prime over original. And then, because the scale factor of corresponding sides are proportional, we're going to be setting up proportional. Um, and so we've set these up before, so that's why we set them up as a ratio. So, if you have a scale factor that is greater than 1, So a scale factor of 1.2 or 1.5 or 3.8. That means that the figure, the original figure is going to increase. It's going to get bigger in size. If your scale factor is less than one, so a decimal number, um, you're not gonna have a negative. You'll have like a decimal number for what we're doing. And so that means that it is going to be smaller. So it's gonna make it's going to decrease. Let me use the right word. Decrease in size. So this would be like taking something to the copy machine and making it bigger or making it smaller. So blueprints, people that create like a, an outline of how, like a house layout, obviously it's not real size, so they've shrunk it down. So they used a scale factor to shrink that down. They dilated it to make it smaller. So here is how you dilate things. So this is to dilate by a scale factor of 2. So since this is 2, we know that our shape is going to increase. It's bigger than 2, or sorry, bigger than 1, so it's going to increase. So in order to find our new points, we're going to multiply each x value and each y value by the scale factor. So on these ones, they're going to have to give you the scale factor so that you can find your new points. So they'll have to tell you what it is. So we're going to take, this would be written, a perfect example of understanding our algebraic rules. So algebraically, this says take each x and take each y, and it says multiply it by 2. So that's what it would look like algebraically. It says take your original x and y, and multiply each one by two. So whatever the number is in front of it is our scale factor. So if I took negative two and multiplied it by two, I would now have negative four. So I'm just I'm gonna write this down here because some of you really like to see your points. We have negative two and we have negative one. So if you were to plug this in, it would be two times negative two for your first point and two times one for your second point. So that would be negative four positive 2. If we did B, we would have 2 comma 1. When we plug it into our scale factor, it would be 2. Some of you still don't know that that means times, so 2 times 2 for X. These would be my new X values. And this would be 1 times, sorry, 2 times 1, which would be 2. So B prime would be 4 and 2. C prime, so I'm doing 2 times 2, which would be 4, and um, 2 times negative 1, which would be negative 2, and then again, negative 2 times 2 is going to be negative 4, and negative 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2. So now I can plot these. Negative 4, positive 2, 
So there's my original A. Whoops. Now my A prime is right here. B was at four, um, two, one. Now it's at four, two. C was originally at two, negative one. Now it's at four, negative two. And D was originally at negative two, one. And D prime is at negative four, negative two. So if you look at this, you should be able to see that my shape got larger. It increased in size. All right, now let's go down to finding the scale factor. So in this case, they're trying to tell you, they're asking you what actually is a scale factor. So they've graphed your image and they've graphed your pre-image and you're trying to figure out what did they do to my pre-image to find to get my image points so first thing you need to do is write our q r s q r s t let's see those alphabetical so we're going to find each of those points so r originally started at two one um s originally started at two four and t originally started at four one those are my pre-image points. Now, if you look, I went from pre-image to image. Obviously, I went from something smaller to something bigger. So my scale factor, even though I started with x, y, my scale factor is going to be a number greater than 1 because it got bigger, not smaller. So first thing we're going to do is set up a ratio for any vertex, for any corner. And you choose either. You do not have to do both. You either choose x or y. You do not have to choose both, but make sure that you write it as a fraction and um, then simplify the ratio. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose my X value and it, and you could do both. It's not going to matter. So I'm going to choose um, on this one. Let's just choose. We're going to do remember that our ratio needs to be image over original. I don't even know how we want to write this. I, sh I actually should probably put more space in here. So pre-image over image. So I'm going to choose for mine, I'm going to choose S. Okay. So this is how we're going to set it up. So I'm going to do S prime over S. And I'm either going to choose um, my X or my Y. You can do both. It's going to be the same thing. And I'll actually show you that. So I'm going to, since I'm going to do S prime, I'm just going to write this point down, which became 510. Whoops. Um, while I'm at it, let's just do all these. You'll see that no matter what, they'll all come the same. R prime was 5. And it's going to be 2.5. And this one will be... 10 and 2.5 and I'll I know the 2.5 based on my scale factor so here we have s prime s prime I'm going to use the y value so s prime and I'm just using y originally my y was for s prime was at 4 that's what goes on the bottom s prime is going to go on the top which is 10 so I have s prime the y value is 10 s prime the y was 4 if I simplify this, I'm going to end up with 5 over 2. And you can convert that to 2.5 if you want. So all you're doing, again, let's just do another one. So this one here, you could write it like this. I'm timesing each x by 5 halves. I'm timesing each y by 5 halves. The scale factor for you guys tends to be the hardest one to find. Just because you have to apply more math skills. So let's do this one. Let's do r prime over r and we'll do again we'll do the y value you can do the x value it actually we'll do the x value just to show you it's not going to matter so we'll do our x values here so i'm going to take r prime x which was five and i'm going to take r which was two and you'll notice that it was still five halves no matter which ones i choose it's always going to end up being the same if i simplified correctly all right so let's move on and look at these ones these ones give us, again, they give us a scale factor. So our algebraic rule would say take each x and multiply it by 1.5. Take each y and multiply it by 
that's my algebraic rule. Then I know that this is bigger than one, so my shape should be getting larger. So A, I'm just gonna write this off to the side here. A originally started at negative two, negative two. B originally started at two, two. And C originally started at four, negative two. So now I'm gonna take each X and multiply it by 1.5. I'm gonna take each Y and multiply it by 1.5. So two times 1.5 is gonna give me a new point of negative three. Negative two, sorry, negative three. Negative two times 1.5 is still gonna give me a point of negative three. So now this one, instead of being at negative two, negative two, it's gonna be negative three, negative three. B, I'm going to take 2 times 1.5 and get positive 3. 2 times 1.5 and get positive 3. So now B is going to be at 3, 3. So B prime. C, um, 4 times 1.5 is 6. Negative 2 times 1.5 is negative 3. And so we would have 6 and negative 3. And so when we do this, you can see my shape got larger. Oh, I must have done something wrong there. Six and negative three. Hold on. Something's off with this. One, two, three. Oh, my A is wrong. That's why. Okay, A is um, negative three. One, two, three. It should have been here. Sorry, I could tell it was off because my triangle was not looking right there. All right, so let's try this again. So here's A to B to C. There we go, that looks better. So that is what you should have. All right, this one you're gonna try on your own. So pause this and try it on your own. Um, and then you're gonna come back and do these. I'm gonna go over these two with you and then you're gonna do these two. All right. Hopefully you've paused, and now let's find our scale factor. So our rule is going to be find, I'm gonna take one point, so I'm gonna use this point here and here, and I need R prime over R, and I'm gonna use the X values. So I'm gonna write X right here. So R prime, my first X value is one, R it started at five. And then I'm going to try to simplify one-fifth, which it will not simplify. So you can either write this as one-fifth or you could do point 0.2. It's not going to matter. My rule says take each x, take each y, and you can put multiply by point 0.2. Or you could have written in one-fifth. So in this case, my original got smaller. It shrunk down. It became way smaller than it started. All right, I'm gonna show you this one here, and then you guys can do these two on your own. Again, I need to find, it does not matter whether I choose M, A, T, H. I'm gonna choose H, and I'm gonna choose, so H prime, I'm gonna pick my Y value over H, Y value. So H prime is negative three over negative four. The only thing that this is gonna do is simplify to three fourths, 4.75. So this one again shrunk because it got smaller. So it says take each x, take each y, and we're going to multiply them by a scale factor of 0.75 or 3 fourths. All right, you need to try those two on your own and then bring me your notes to check.